Hello, hello. This is the second day of prayer and fasting service. I felt impressed by the Lord to share some testimonies that's happened uh, just to give you some encouragement. Amen. Uh, so, uh, what's some testimonies that comes to your spirit? One that we took one thing home and that's the first thing there's one one lady she said that the Lord's weaning her off of her pain medicine. She took one, one pain pill and it lasted how long? Thirteen hours. Thirteen hours. And then she don't take them every day either like she used to. And uh, when she first started working with the ministry, she couldn't even walk up those three steps. Her grandson had to come over and help her up the steps and she was walking on a four wheel walker and then a legs walker with no wheels and a cane she don't use none of that now she just walks out there and she's got a couple of dogs she walks out there takes care of the dogs and comes back like it ain't nothing walks into walmart we used to have to park as close as we could to the doors and then get one of them electric cars and put it almost up in the car so she'd get in it but now she just walk from the parking lot in there and goes in the store and does whatever she wants to do. And uh, But she learned about faith. She learned about speaking to your mountain. You know, hers was walking, speaking, and then don't worry, don't care. And Are you off all your depression medicine? Yes, I've been off that for a year and nine months. She's been off all of her depression medicine for a year and nine months. How long was you on it? Years and years, or? About three years. About three years she was on it, but she's been off of it for a year and nine months. She said, she's given testimony last night. She said uh, when she starts, when depression tries to come, she just gets in the Word and speaks to it and starts, gets happy and starts praising and worshiping God and runs it off. You can do the same thing. Amen. <laughs> just runs it off. Amen. And then uh, we... What's that? It works. It works. Your word works. We had one guy, he was taking, in the morning when he got up, he took two 600 milligrams of pain medicine. And then at noon, he took two 600 milligrams of pain medicine. That's 1,200, and then another 1,200. And then before he went to bed in the evening, he took more, two more. That was 3,600 of milligrams of pain medicine. And then in the middle of the night when he got up to go to the bathroom or something or get adjusted in the bed, he took two more. That's a lot of pain medication. That is 40, that's a lot, <laughs> 48, that's 48 milligrams of pain medication. And he started listening to these videos, and he listened to them, I don't know, for several weeks. Uh, you know, it works. You get it by listening and hearing, but you have to put it into practice. And so he started saying, you know what? I'm healed. Isaiah 53, 5, I'm healed. He, then he couldn't sleep, and he'd take some pain medication. And then one night, he said, I'm healed. And he fell asleep. He forgot to take all of his pain medication that whole day because he was just meditating on the Word. Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes were healed. And he was praying and fasting with us. He couldn't be here physically. He lives too far away. But uh, he was here online with us. And he was learning. And he said, what I would do instead of thinking, I better take some pain medication if I'm going to go to sleep. Instead of saying that, he would just lay his hand, he was laying down, he just lay his hand on his leg, and uh, the, the pain was mostly in his feet and ankles. And he said, I, I just speak to that swelling in Jesus' name, that it leaves my body. And then he would say, uh, thank you, Lord, I'm healed. Thank you, Lord, I'm healed. He would meditate that, like Joshua 1.8. He'd meditate that, and he'd just, thank you, Lord, I'm healed. Thank you, Lord, I'm healed. He did, And even when he got started getting sleepy, he'd start dozing off to sleep. 
He said sometimes a pain would shoot down through there and just wake him up. He'd say, no, I bind you, devil, and I'm healed in Jesus' name. And he said he just kept doing that. He still does it today. And he hadn't taken pain medication. He told me that it was since last September. <laughs> so it's been about a year. So same thing happened to you. We had one guy. Uh, I've been praying with him and releasing faith with him for uh years now he had terminal cancer they give him 90 days to live and then he, he lived 90 days and they said well 100 days and he lived 100 days well now it's been years and the people here in the house we went down to the church uh the one big church here in town invited us to come eat thanksgiving with them so we went down there and we went down there well then uh, he was there and I said, Isaiah 53, 5, he said, by his stripes I'm healed. He was there with his family. And uh, that was years ago. That was like, I guess, over five years ago. And uh, I'd drive by his house sometimes. He'd be out there doing something in the driveway. And I'd drive by, I'd just holler at him, Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes you're healed. And he said, that's right. And he's got full-blown cancer in his body. Uh but he's still alive. He's up walking around. He's eating. And doctors are like, why aren't you dead? <laughs> you know, why? Well, they took him off all the pain medication. They took him off all the treatments. They said, there's no treatments helping you. But whatever you're doing, keep doing it. <laughs> and that's what he's doing. He's, he's speaking by faith. See, I am the healed. And I want to make a really, really clear thing where most people miss it concerning anything to deal with God is they think they're praying to God to get God to do something. No. You already are saved when you confess Jesus as Lord. You already are healed the second that you accept Jesus. The healing covenant, the salvation covenant, is the same thing. Amen. And uh, people say, well, why are you praying and fasting if you're not trying to get God to do something? You're praying and fasting, of course, we do it out of obedience, but also you're praying and fasting to make you sensitive to God. That way your physical body is not in control of, okay, eat this, poke this in you, drink this, go ahead and eat that, get all filled up on that. No, now we're still eating and drinking and everything. We're not being crazy about it, but uh, we're doing it in moderation as the Lord says. That's the difference. And when you fast, it always has to do with food. I've had people say, oh, I'm going to fast TV, or I'm going to fast reading books, or I'm going to fast this, or fast that, or I'm going to, you know, all these things, which I understand that. But according to the Bible, the only real fast, Bible fast, that works is food. That's the only thing the Bible ever said to fast from. And so... Uh, uh, you can fast from all them other things too. Might be good sometimes you cut them off. But at the same time, the prayer and fasting is to make you sensitive to God, make you more sensitive to God instead of more sensitive to what your uh, physical needs are. Amen. So there's a few testimonies. And of course, we've had miracle babies, a couple of them. And that looked like they wouldn't they wasn't gonna live and we spoke and said they'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord and we got a video, what was it yesterday of her walking across the floor and kind of running a little bit. Yeah. And so uh, you know, we all kind of, you know, pain leaving and people walking and people getting saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, delivered. Her grandson, I guess about a year ago now, he gave his life to Jesus and got born again. And just uh, six, months. six months, six months ago. Yeah. And so uh, just all kind of things going on. And it'll keep on going on too. So it doesn't just happen during prayer and fasting time. But the prayer and fasting time prepares you, prepares you as an individual for the rest of the times. Amen. Everybody ought to have times that they set aside and do prayer and fasting. Now, this really doesn't change our schedule any. We, we do prayer and we do that every day. Uh, but it's encouraged, it's, we're doing this public for you 
and us and other people that we're praying for. And so we've had a lot of good comments on the on the YouTube channel. And uh, so we just call them in. We call in people from the north, south, east, and west to come into the kingdom of God. We break down every barrier. The Bible says they're blinded because uh, they can't receive because they're blinded. We say that blinders be removed off of their eyes. The yokes being removed off of their mindsets. And uh, that the Spirit of God and the Gospel is freely preached to them and they get turned on to Jesus. Amen, amen. Speaking of babies, last night there's a an older couple, their old retired couple, and the, uh, the authorities had given them a baby to take care of. Uh, and they said, you know, just see how it works out. And then they talked to me about it, and they said, well, uh, they're wanting me to adopt the baby. And they're an older couple. And I said, well, what do you want to do? They said, well, the mother wants to, uh, that we think the mother should take care of the baby. I said, well, you've had the baby for over a year. She hadn't called. She hadn't said nothing. She no interest at all. Uh, so they said, well, I didn't think of that. You know, they're old school thinking, you know, you, they thought every, every mother would want to be in, interested in their children, but if they're, you know, doing something else, they're probably not. But so I said, go ahead and adopt a baby. They said, well, my goodness, by the time this baby gets grown, I'll be 85. And I said, well, shoot, there's a lot of people that live to be over 85. You're living, not dying, and clear the works of the Lord. So they went ahead and adopted that baby. I saw him last night at Walmart, and that baby getting big and Oh, man, they're just having a time with that baby. So, uh, you know, we have miracles like that, too. They said the baby would have died uh, because it needed 24-hour care. There wasn't really anything wrong with the baby. It just needed to be held and loved and cared for uh, because it had been neglected so long. So they got the baby, and, you know, nobody else had cared anything about it. He thought one of his kids would take the baby, but he didn't. But they didn't. They got their own lives to live. So uh, uh, grandma and grandpa turn into turn into uh, mom and daddy now. So it's a good thing. Amen. People living a lot longer nowadays, especially when they're serving God. Amen. Uh, the Bible says 120. Uh, you, the Bible does say that, but we're uh, we're not underneath that covenant. It says, well, what about Psalms 70 or 80? We're not underneath that covenant. That's all Old Testament law covenant. You know, what covenant has superseded over into the New Testament through Jesus? The Abrahamic covenant. Then the Lord just spoke to me. Oh, it's been a while, while back. And uh, I had to repent because I was telling people 70 or 80 years. Then I was telling people 120 and their children was 100. And the Lord just spoke to me and said, you're underneath. You're under, you're you got born again through Jesus, and Jesus preached and taught Abrahamic covenant. That's before the law. I said, yeah, that's right. He said, well, then you're serving Jesus and doing the doing the teaching and covenant of Abraham. I said, yeah. He said, well, when did Abraham die? I said, I don't know. <laughs> so I looked it up. Abraham was 175. There you go. You got it. 175 belongs to you too. Don't settle for nothing less. You reach a lot of people and are growing a lot of faith uh, in that length of time. As you feed your faith, you'll starve your doubts to death. And we will see you mañana. Have a great one. Have a good one. God bless. Love you guys.